Yeah, welcome. It's, uh, thank you for being with us uh, all across the planet, as they say. Fergal, it's nice to see you in the seat again. Good to be we'll here, be talking. We'll be talking uh, the economy presently. But right away, and you have an interest in this as well, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the draw for round two of the All-Ireland Championships uh, was made within the last, oh, in the last 15 minutes. So we bring that to you now. What, what have we got here? We have Clare. They have drawn. They're at home to Leash. And then our first one of interest is Derry versus Down. Uh, that's what you have. And then Longford versus Wexford. Leitrim versus Armagh. That's not bad for Armagh, is it? No, Armagh will be delighted with that draw. Yeah. What about the Derry Down thing? Well, it's a rerun of the first round of the championship. Which Armagh won? No, which Down won. Down, I beg your pardon, which Down won. A very yeah. difficult. It's a game I'm sure Down would have preferred not to have. But having yeah. said that, if you're going to advance and indeed win the All Ireland, uh, you have to beat everyone. But I think uh, it's a very tough draw. And the fact that Down haven't got a home draw, I mean, it's, uh, it's very tough luck to think they have to travel yeah. to Derry twice in the one year. Yeah. Uh, but maybe perhaps they can draw inspiration from uh, the young Bourne footballers who won the All Ireland field under 14 yeah, in Derry they yesterday. They do well, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, they were up in Derry doing uh, it. I think well. Down will also uh, b uh, take uh, take inspiration from the performance against Donegal. Yes. Uh, but they'll be under no illusions. Derry will be an extremely hard game, and to travel to Derry, who will be motivated to uh, to come back from their last defeat to Down. Derry were yeah. very wounded in their last defeat, so uh, I think that uh, that'll be one for the supporter, but a very difficult one for the teams. You're amazing, me. You 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 know more about football even than you do about the economy. It would seem <laughs> you you speak with great <laughs> eloquence and ease. Well, I don't know whether <laughs> I know it, but uh, obviously uh, sport would be my hobby. Of course, Kevin has got Fermanagh. Well, that's a, that's again a very interesting draw because what has happened there is that's also a rerun. Uh, of a previous Ulster Championship game this year, except Cabin will be at home. And uh, Cabin, I think, will think they were a little unlucky yeah. uh, to lose by a point to Monaghan on Saturday. But uh, uh, Fermanagh will have their tails up after winning uh, yeah, winning at the weekend. So mm. I think that will be a very exciting derby game. Absolutely. And Tyrone's away to Roscommon. And what about uh, Louth is away to Kildare. What else? We've got Galway at home to Waterford. Well, Tyrone, Tyrone away to us common. Tyrone will be happy with that. Louth, uh, perhaps coming back, and obviously Cahill O'Rourke, the manager there, and uh, a lot of local interest in the Louth game. So just to remind people, it's uh, down uh, away to Derry, and uh, Armagh away to Leitrim. So it's uh, fingers crossed time, I suppose. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, this is the exciting in the back door. The team's coming back in, and uh, it's an interesting uh, concept. You know, with London it? having yeah. reached the the Connacht yeah. final yesterday, well, you know, you never know what's around yeah, the corner. Absolutely, you're weak now. You you were involved in the Rooney the Rooney uh, scholarship, the Rooney fellowship for students. Uh, how did that go during the week? That was a fantastic evening on Wednesday evening. The, the Rooney Fellowship, believe it or not, is one of the great success stories of uh, Newry, Pittsburgh, of, of, of Ireland and America uh, evolving relationships. The uh, Wednesday evening was the 21st annual Rooney Fellowship and uh, 21 years ago when things weren't just as bright here in Newry, uh, Dan Rooney along with Tony O'Reilly, who they obviously they, yeah. they had just founded the, the US Ireland Fund at the time a couple of years earlier. But Dan Rooney uh, had links, uh, his ancestors came from Neary, his great ancestors, and uh, through uh, contact with Seamus Mallon, uh, I was fortunate to represent the business community and go out with Seamus Mallon to meet Dan Rooney and uh, Tony O'Reilly. Mm. We were joined by Sister Michelle O'Leary, who you may recall, ah, yes. the Iron mm. Institute, and at a later stage, Raymond Mullen mm. from, from the Institute. From the institute. Yeah. And basically, there was a decision taken then that the best way to try and enhance economic activity and growth between Newry and Pittsburgh would be to do something that was sustainable. Mm. So they came up with this concept that a student from the Newry Institute, now the Southern Regional College, mm. each year, would win a scholarship for one year to go to Pittsburgh and they would go to either Duquesne or Pittsburgh University on a, on a biannual basis and they would do their work experience at the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Heinz Corporation. Wow. It doesn't get much better Now where than you that. see these life changing uh, uh, impacts of this scheme is whenever you go along each year the outgoing Rooney Fellow comes back to tell you what they've done. Mm. Now can I tell you it's inspiring. Mm. If you'd have heard Sarah Law was the young girl who's mm -hmm. just come back I heard her talk last year when she was awarded the scholarship. In 12 months, the impact that that has had uh, is phenomenal. And even more important, there's not one of those 20 Rooney fellows who have s 
in unemployed. Wow. There's not one of those 20 Rooney fellows who wouldn't say degrees are important, post postgraduates are important, but having the Rooney Fellowship on your CV is an opportunity mm. for life. And those people who come back, they're, they're reaching out, quite apart from their own doing well, they're reaching out into the community and influencing others. Oh, w without, I mean, you ju it's just hard to believe that a young person at 20, 21 years of age, normally 20, it's normally just their, their, third, their second or their third year of their course, mm. uh, they come back and the experience they've got is phenomenal. And then, you know, to, to think that Dan Rooney, uh, I think he's 81 this month. Wow. That Dan mm. Rooney and his wife, obviously, uh, he, he, he traveled back from America to present this prize. You mm. know, this, this really, Dan Rooney, is actually being made an honorary degree at the University of Ulster this week. Yes. Uh, just a uh, couple of months ago, picked by uh, Chicago uh, as the U.S. Irish person, I think, of the century. Yeah. Never lost his, his Newry connections. Always values Newry, big time. Yeah, and he, Dan Rooney is an amazing man. Because he, he physically looks frail, people misunderstand that, he's fr that, that mentally he's frail. They couldn't be further from the truth. Dan Rooney is one of the most mentally alert people I have ever, ever met. Mm -hmm. I had the fortune of having him and his wife, Patricia, down uh, the house at Anne, hosted coffee, afternoon coffee for them mm -hmm. uh, last Lovely. week. And can I tell Lovely. you, uh, you're talking here about a guy who's very influential in world terms. This yes. was the guy who President Obama chose to lead his business campaign for the first election. Mm -hmm. This was the guy who Obama launched his first election campaign night with Dan Rooney. This was the guy the night before Obama was elected. Where did he go the night before the election to finish his campaign? The Pittsburgh Steelers Stadium. This guy is very close to Obama. Yeah. And what happened was he had resigned as a US ambassador to Ireland in December, but Obama out of courtesy, because Rooney had said the last time Obama had visited Ireland, you must bring Michelle and the kids back. Yes. He didn't appoint a successor and he asked Rooney to come back. Rooney hosted Michelle Obama in Ireland officially for the day and a half, out wow. of courtesy. Yeah. This is the influence this guy ah, has. Yeah, he's, he's and this man. is a great advocate for Nuri. He's well a gentleman. Let and me take you from the, sorry. Go I ahead. just want to go one further point because it's important. Rooney's Meadow, which technically speaking is not his ancestral family, but he has always had a very close connection with the White Gates. He's indeed, yes. actually it was him that uh, planted the first, cut the first sod for the White Gates Community yeah. Center. I was there yeah. myself. Each year, each year he comes back and meets Peter Jackson and the Whitegates Community Group. And again, last Wednesday at six o'clock, him and Patricia, out, out they went, the and they make a generous donation each year uh, towards uh, Whitegates and ask Whitegates to distribute this among their very good causes. Fantastic. Now, from the sublime to the ridiculous, can you believe that people who walk the same hallways of finance as you do in the broad sense could ever have been responsible for those tapes that were published, the Anglo tapes? Well, I have to say I'm a wee bit unusual perhaps, but I, I have a motto in life and perhaps you can prove me wrong. I'm not aware and I can never quote a case study where anybody, whether it be personal or business, looking back in anger achieved anything. So my first judgment is that I think a lot of the hysteria in terms of the anger looking back will not achieve anything. Indeed, actually, it may well cause further problems for Ireland. Mm -hmm. I think the underlying issues in the tapes are very serious. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, one has to be careful. You could be talking to me off air this morning. We could be talking about football or Armagh or down. Mm -hmm. That conversation replayed five years later is a different conversation. Absolutely. Having said that, I think the very worrying aspects of these tapes are that, it would, that there would appear to be a suggestion that people at a very senior level perhaps were not disclosing all the facts. Now that's very serious. Mm -hmm. And it's very serious because of the, no the knock-off impact that had on every individual in America, mm -hmm. uh, in the South, indeed on mm -hmm. people in this island, indeed. Uh, in this mm -hmm. end of the mm -hmm. island. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you think of the 200,000 plus people not able to pay their mortgage in yes, present, yep. if you think of all the people that have had to emigrate, and really the big issue here is that unfortunately confidence in the economy at national level is so important and these guys were very very influential now for what it's worth i believe the bigger questions are yet to come mm. and does that indicate that you have a belief that maybe and uh, maybe uh, an, uh, an inquiry an investigation a public uh, uh, examination of the whole thing is merited and if so where do you go to get the skill within the country to bring forth a bank inquiry well the big issue here is, I think the brief should be to learn lessons. Now, uh, as opposed to punish. 
Yeah, I, I think you're not, contrary to what people want, I again come back to you. Looking back in anger achieves nothing, mm -hmm. whether it be in personal relationships, whether it be in business. I just mm -hmm. haven't, if you can come forward with an example, let me know it. It's I just the thought, it's just the thought, Fergal, that, that th that's a recipe for no one ever going to prison, no, no one no, ever no, being I know, punished. No, no, I'm not saying that. I believe that, that the law should take its course. Ah, yes, and I yeah. believe that the, that the guardy and the fraud, should, and if there is fraud, that's a different thing altogether. Yeah. That's this is just crude that's language you at the, the moment. That should go through the courts, but let's yeah. be fair with tribunals. Yeah. Tribunals can't put anybody in jail. No. What tribunals have done is they've, so they've raised issues, but actually if you look at the tribunals in the South, yeah. I don't think there's yet a conviction arising out of no. them. So, you know, it's, it's very fine trying to say it's, it's the old story in any type of situation, we'll hold a meeting, we'll hold an yeah, investigation, yeah. Mm. but what's the outcome? Yeah. And what's the damage that may do in the long term? Yeah. Now, it's very clear there has to be an investigation, it's very clear there has to be a tribunal. Mm. I think it is sad uh, that people have already tried to politicise it because I think mm. that's a nightmare. I yeah. think no matter what anybody believes, everyone will have to take responsibility Absolutely. here. And I believe the biggest questions actually are the regulator. Yeah. The biggest questions here are for the regulator. Yeah. He was the individual he in his office. Us. Well, whether he was or not, we don't know yet. Ooh. But his office w had the responsibility to actually oversee this. Mm. And the reality is that's where the question should be asked. But as I read and listen to the debate on the radio the last week, Nobody said that. Yeah. Nobody has said that. Now the big issues then are, in terms of Anglo, that these are the same people who obviously went after prominent business people, and, and there are really, I think what you will see is, I will think you will see a number of turns now also in the Quinn case. Because I think the Quinn case will have, uh, have quietly been making the argument that these people knew the bank was insolvent before they sold them shares. Yes. Now, whether yes, that's right yes. or not, nobody knows. Nobody but knows. I can assure you, I think you're going to see that evolve. And I think what yeah. you're really going to see now is very murky waters. Yeah. And while it's, while it's appalling, while the language is appalling, it's not necessarily in any terms uh, illegal or wrong language. It's the language of... Of, of, of the gutter of finance, if you can think of it in that way. Yeah, well, don't get me wrong, I think some of the things that were said were very concerning and, and, and very concerning the people at a senior level were discussing them in that way. Having said that, uh, you know, if you go back to the very first tip, mm -hmm. I think it was our friend Mr. Bow, he summarised the five options. Now, uh, I never met Mr. Bow, but he's quite a smart man because in hindsight, if you were picking the five options in hindsight five years later, the five options he quoted were correct. Mm. And they actually mm. were the five options. And he was quoting them in advance. Mm. So, you know, to be fair, you know, uh, the tone of it, I think the tone is, is unfortunate. I think it's very sad, very sad, that the people are hearing this in a leaked form. I think that mm. the, the bigger issues here are, why have we not tried to investigate you know, what did happen in the run-up? And the one unfortunate thing I think here is, it would be very dangerous to say, you know, 18 September, what happened 18 September 2008? I think equally it was important is the whole process that led up to it and afterwards. And I think ultimately there will be many, many lessons. But this was... This was drama at the highest level. Oh, yeah. You know, make no mm. mistake about it. You know, some of us have the luxury of sitting in a, in, mm. a, in, 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 a, in a TV studio here, talking five years later. These people, mm. the confidence in the economy can be half a second. It can be a loose word. Absolutely. This was not easy. And a huge weight on shoulders. This was not easy, and I don't think anybody will ever know. I mean, if you take the best brains in the world over the last five years, yeah. have have done uh, turnarounds two or three times in trying to solve the problem. Fergal, thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you very good much. Good man as well. We got, we got football and we got the economy all in the b one magnificent Fergal McCormack package. Well done and thank you. Thank Sean, you. some music please.